Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to another video. So this time we're looking at Active Directory. We're actually on a domain controller here right now, and we're going to show you how to dump out all of the password hashes that are stored on this domain controller. And then we can actually take them to other tools like Hashcat, try to crack them, but it, it makes a great way for you as a sysadmin, or maybe you're part of an infosec team where you want to audit your environment and see, hey, what users or what type of passwords are my users using? Do we have weak credentials in the environment? And rather than going through like and doing a password spraying type attack, this is a really good way to be able to go through a ton of passwords quickly and see what weak credentials might be in your environment. So stay tuned. This is going to be a good one. All right, here we go. So we're looking at a Windows Server 2019 box here, and it's already got Active Directory configured up and running. We've got a handful of users here. This is our domain controller. On this side of the house, this is a Kali Linux system. The only thing we're actually gonna use out of it is this Impacket tool suite. And if you've watched any of my other Active Directory exploitation videos, you've seen me use Impacket before. If you haven't seen those videos, definitely go check them out. I've got all kinds of cool content. but. Anyway, to, to get Impacket, if this is your first time seeing this, you go out to GitHub, you can just search for Impacket, you'll find this repo. From here, you can just clone it down, literally copy this, do a git clone, paste that in, and there's even some installation instructions right here. Just Python, pip install, do your thing, and you're good to go. So once you have that installed on your system, there'll be this folder in here, this examples folder. So we've got all these different scripts that we can run, but the one that we're interested in is secretsdump.py. So I'm actually gonna show you two different ways that we're gonna leverage secretsdump.py. The first is I'm gonna show you how we can use it remotely to go ahead and, and try to, to export or dump out all of the, the local NTLM hashes off of that domain controller. And that'll give us the user creds for everybody in the domain, right? So. We're going to show you how to do this remotely first. So to do that, obviously, we need to make sure we can even communicate to this system. So if I open up a PowerShell, we'll do a quick IP config. I've got two different addresses here. Let me copy this one down. Let's just see if we can even communicate back and forth. And we can. Pings are working. We've got communication. So now we can go and try to use secretstump.py. And I'm going to say point at just the DC. And we'll paste in that IP address. Now before I hit go on this, we're actually gonna to need to go in and give it a username that we want it to authenticate as. So this video is targeted to people who are working either as like a sysadmin or maybe you're part of an infosec team and you're wanting to do an audit of your environment to see what type of passwords your users are using. Are they putting you in a vulnerable state by using things like winter 2020, you know, or password one, two, three. So we're trying to get these hashes so then we can crack them and see if there's any like low hanging fruit out there that we need to train our users on so that way they learn how to use better passwords. So because of that reason, this does require that you have domain admin rights already on the environment that you're working in. If you're a pen tester, you could totally use this in engagement too, as long as it's within scope, right? So it'd probably be towards the end of your engagement. After you've gotten DA, you just are at this point are trying to like prove impact. What's the point, right? Like we got DA, but what does that mean? Well, this is one way to show that. So to mention who it is we're gonna authenticate as, right here, you'll throw in the domain, throw in the user. In my case, L James is a domain admin for the NBA domain. And then just point that at the box you're hitting press enter, and you'll be prompted for the password for that L. James user. Punch that in, and it didn't work. So something didn't work here. Let's take a look. Secret stump, just EC, NBA, L. James, at 100110. I believe that's right. Maybe I had a typo in my password. And permission denied. Something went wrong with this approach. Maybe we need to run this elevated. So I'll do a sudo in the front of this. Try this one more time. Boom, check that out. So we now have all of the hashes dumped out of the system. Now, if you wanna see actually going through the process of cracking these hashes, I made a video about cracking NTLM v2 hashes, which is, they are different hash types than what we're looking at here. 
Um, if you're interested in how to actually crack these specifically and you want to see all of the syntax for Hashcat, let me know in the comments. I, I might make a video just for that if you'd like. But for the scope of this video, we'll copy out all these, store that into a hash file if we'd like to, but this is how you actually dump the hashes remotely once you have DA credentials. But what if you didn't have um, the ability to run this? What if you don't have like network connectivity from a Kali system to the actual Windows server, or you wanna know a way to do this living off of the Windows LAN, right? So let me, let me show you how we can do it out of here. Back over on our Windows server, let's show you how we can go ahead and get this locally off the file system. Say maybe the Kali box doesn't have like network connectivity or something like that, right? So we're gonna leverage PowerShell quite a bit to do this. If you try to do it all out of the GUI, it's just not gonna work right. Uh, for example, what we're looking to do is copy down two different files out of this file system. Both of them are gonna live inside the Windows installation directory. Uh, one of them's in System32 and the other one's in uh, NTDS. So there's two different files that we need. One of them is the file that actually stores the password hashes, and then the other is the system hive that actually handles the encryption of the password hashes. So we're going to need both of these in order to decrypt the, uh, I guess like the storage of the hashes, so then we can even go and try to try to actually crack those hashes. If we can get these two files off the system, we can go in and take them over to our Kali box, and then we'll be able to do uh, something similar like we did with Secret Stump to extract the hashes, try to crack them, and do all that fun stuff. However, we do have one challenge. If I go into Windows, we're already in that. Let me look for the System32 folder. And then we're looking for config. So this is one of the files that we're gonna need. If I were to just try to copy this, and say, throw it into like a temp directory. Hit continue. It's actually gonna give us an error. It's saying that we can't copy it because the, the file is open. It's actually being used by the operating system. So that, that raises a challenge for us. If, you're, if you have a backup solution in place, you could probably rip this right off the backup system. But if you don't, we can use shadow copies to go in and take a backup and then since that backup's not gonna be used by the operating system, we should be able to copy files off of it. So the easiest way to do this is to come into PowerShell. I'm just gonna start by changing into that temp directory just cause I like being in that temp directory. <laughs> um, and then we'll use the following command to actually go in and take a backup. It's just a VSS admin create shadow. And I don't know if it's really, if I should call it a backup, it's a shadow copy in Windows. And then you just specify what directory or what drive you're looking to, to create that shadow copy of. In our case, we're looking to do this on the C drive. You may need to specify a different drive letter if you have your operating system installed on a different drive. Like ours is here on the C drive, but if for whatever reason you installed it on like D or E or F or something like that, uh, then you'll want to specify that here. But cool, looks like that was successfully created. We now have a new shadow copy at this weird spot. Perfect. So the first thing we want to do is figure out where that shadow copy actually got posted. I mean, I know it gives us this UNC path here, but if I were to like try to copy or even just list out the contents of that path, it doesn't show us anything. So what I found, if you actually come into the properties of the C drive, you can go into previous versions. This is where it lists the various shadow copies that you have. And this is the one that we just took. If I open this guy up, now we're actually looking at a different path here that specifies uh, the shadow copy that, that we're actually working with. So then we can go into Windows System32 config, and we've got a system folder, or I guess a system file right inside of here. Again though, if you try to copy this down, you're actually gonna run into now permission-based issues and whatever. Instead of dealing with it out of Explorer, I just found let's use PowerShell and it works like a charm. So let's go into the properties of this file and we can actually see the full path listed right here. We can just go ahead and select all, copy that. And now we can do a copy for this file that just has the directory. So we'll have to also give it the name, which in our case is, what was it, system? I couldn't even remember. <laughs> okay, copy that down, list the contents of our temp directory, check it out. We got the system file. So the second file that we need is actually 
in the Windows directory still, but it's not in System32. It's under NTDS, and it's NTDS.dit. So in theory, should be able to come in here, come back into the Windows, and then do NTDS, NTDS.dit. Perfect. So we've got the two files that we need. So now, go into our temp folder. I'm going to go in and take both of these. I'm just going to zip them up. I sent them to the desktop. It's not what I wanted. Send to compress zip folder. And it threw it on the desktop anyway. Whatever. So now, um, you can transfer these however you want. I'm going to use a just like a file share. This is my domain controller in my lab environment. Um, and so I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste this in. This is already a file share that's actually publicly accessible to everybody on my network. So if you're in production, don't do this. <laughs> don't copy it to a publicly accessible file share that other people can see. Again, this this folder really has like the keys to your kingdom. You wanna transfer this and you wanna, you wanna be really careful with this file. Um, but I don't care in my lab environment, right? I'm, I'm a good security guru. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that into that public share and then we'll go and download it from my Kali system. Um, so we can use SMB client to do this and we'll just connect back to it. What was it? 10, 0, 1, 10, I believe. And my share is called share. I think that's right. Let's try to connect. Yeah. It's asking for work group password. So we know we got that right. Okay. And then we just need to specify L James as the person we're authenticating with and his super secure password. Punch that in. We're connected. And then we can go ahead and say git ntds.zip. Or is it git? It is git, right? Git ntds. ntds.zip. It's not working. Let's try this again. Maybe I need to specify ntds.zip as the output. Do I have exit real quick? Oh, so I'm in this weird directory. I don't have write. Uh, I don't have write permissions inside the op directory, right? So I'm going to go into documents, um, videos, I think it's videos. Maybe it's just, sorry guys, home, vids, and then this was hash dump. Okay, now we'll do this again. And we'll say git ntds.zip. Boom, we got it. Okay, so that's what happens when you don't smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It doesn't it doesn't let me download the file, guys. So please make sure you, you, you hit the like button. It really helps the channel out. All right, cool. So let's exit out of here. Now we have the ntds.zip file. This is pretty trivial at this point. We just need to go ahead and unzip the file. We have two actual files in here. And now we're back to running secretstump.py. If you install it with mpacket using the pip install thing, it should make it to where secretstump.py is already in your path. So just running that and it actually executes the script. You don't have to be in the op directory like I was earlier. Okay, so secretstump.py will specify this time NTDS because we actually have the system local. Um, let's make sure we list this out so I can see everything. So I'm gonna specify the path to my NTDS file, which is right here. And then we'll specify system, give it the path to our system hive, which is right there tell it that we're using local so it's not trying to go out to any like remote file share or remote server and then I'll give it an output file here of hashes.txt fingers crossed it looks like maybe maybe it's gonna work reading decrypting and check it out we were able to dump the hashes off the system we also got some extra cool stuff here. It looks like we got some Kerberos keys. I don't recall if we saw that last time or not. Um, and it looks like it even gave us different like Windows computer system hashes, right? So like Mamba, Goat, those Uncle Drew, those are all um, domain joined computer names. Those, those aren't actual users on the system. So yeah, we got a lot of juicy, juicy stuff in here. And you can take those hashes offline, use Hashcat, try to crack them. If you want to see a video on that, just let me know in the comments and we can make a part two. Otherwise, this is, uh, this is everything I wanted to show you guys. So hopefully you like this content. If you're new, please consider subscribing. 
and I will check you guys out in the next video. Thanks.